The two hardest modules in the PT reading exam are the reading fill in the blanks and reading writing fill in the blanks. There is no guessing in that. I am sure it is troubling you how to prepare and perfect them because without succeeding in them, you can forget about 79 plus course in the PT reading exam. Hello everyone, I am Anurag from Edutrainix PT. Many of you are calling me the master of PT reading strategies. And I would like to oblige with those kind appreciations from you by showing you a simple and the best 15 days plan to master the reading fill in the blanks questions particularly and get 79 plus scores in the very next attempt. If you follow everything I say dot to dot, then no one can stop you in mastering the reading fill in the blanks questions like a champion. Like and subscribe and watch all the steps in the 15 days plan carefully. And if you still can't succeed, just enroll with our classes directly with me. I am not promising that you can improve your scores in the reading module or reading fill in the blanks overnight from 50 to 90. I don't make those kind of false promises as you see on the other channels. I am giving you a solid technique and a plan that if you follow properly, you will definitely succeed from day 1 to day 15. So we will begin on it straight away without wasting any more time. We'll look what you need to do on the day 1. And as you have seen before in my videos, my techniques, the strategies that I'm suggesting always work. Okay, we'll also do some questions right in the end after doing the plan and you will see that those implementation of those plan will actually work for you. So the first day of your preparation, especially for the reading fill in the blanks, should begin with gaining essential knowledge. What is the knowledge that you need to master the reading fill in the blanks? Of course, you need to learn the strategy. But what does strategy constitute of? What does it consist of? It consists of the grammar techniques. Okay, There are some shortcuts also that can help you in doing that. So first day you should watch all the relevant videos or read from a trusted source. Whatever you do, your target should be to get all these grammar techniques that are important for your reading fill in the blanks and also identify the shortcuts. So perfect your grammar techniques on day one and make notes. Don't forget to make notes. Stick it around in your house so that whenever you look at, you know what to do with them. And not just that, we'll also talk about what other things you need to do. So first of all, if you are thinking where to watch these videos, where to get this grammar knowledge, then you just have to look on our channel. I have shared some very nice videos showing you the actual exam questions, how they can be solved using these techniques and they work like a charm. So once you have acquired that relevant knowledge on day one, what you should do on day two is you have to test yourself where you stand currently. So because unless you just set a target of 79 plus and where you are sitting currently, that will decide or that will help you determine how much effort is required from your side. So the day two is important where you test yourself. Where do you do that from? Can you do that from a video or do you need the exam questions? So you can do that from any of my videos related to the reading fill in the blanks. I always share some exam questions towards the end. Try to solve at least three of them. If you are unable to access the video or if you have already enrolled on edutrainx.com, then you will see the prediction files. All the prediction files from the last more than one, two years. And you can download the latest one. And you can see some of the questions that you can attempt. Try three of them from there. Roughly, each of the question will have around five blanks. So you are attempting 15 answers. Check yourself where you stand in three questions randomly. If you are getting 13 out of 15, so that means you are already at a level that is required, but you can still boost your preparation by preparing further and boosting your techniques. If you are over here, 11 out of 15, so that means you are somewhere around 65 for this question. If you are below that 10 or 9, then you are not in the range of what you are looking to achieve. So it will only get you a 50 score in the exam out of 90. And of course, these scores are only for this particular question, reading fill in the blanks. You still need to do well in the reading, writing fill in the blanks. Okay. Now, once you have tested yourself where you stand, set up a target. On day two, you have done that. You can do more questions. Of course, don't just wait for three questions. This is just a demonstration. You can do more questions. If you are able to adapt 
or implement the knowledge that you acquired on day one and see how you are doing throughout the day. And then add all of them and use the same calculations. What I showed you here, simple ones. From day three, what you need to do, because some of the questions in the reading fill in the blanks are also based on meaning of the words. So that's what you need to do. From day three, you have all access to the prediction files if you have enrolled with us, or you can also just sign up free on edutrainix.com and then just buy it from there, very cheap. So extract the words that are appearing in the reading fill in the blanks, because you know what happens when you go in the exam, many of the times what you happens to you is you don't know the meaning of the words. When you don't know the meaning of the words, you get confused which one to pick up. Of course, grammar will help you to shortlist out of eight options, which four or which three are relevant word types to the specific blanks. That grammar will help you, absolutely. But out of the three shortlisted, you still need to apply the meaning of the words to fit the most appropriate word in the correct place. So because of that, understanding the words, improving your vocabulary is always helpful. And don't forget, this is much more helpful for your reading, writing, fill in the blanks. So if you start doing this activity right from the beginning of your preparation, by the time you reach the exam date, you will have a good amount of words in your vocabulary list. So that's what you need to do. Make a diary, dictionary, wherever you want. Microsoft Word, Excel, or if you like writing, maintain a notebook whichever is convenient for you. And then also understand not only the meanings, but also usages. Sometimes you will find out the ways to use collocation, which kind of prepositions are used with those words. Of course, I share these kind of videos every month, vocabulary videos. So watch those videos as well on a monthly basis. Okay, so that will also be helpful to you. Step four, or what we need to do from day four onwards. So. You still need to do what you are doing from day one or day three, adding vocabulary, keep on adding. This is not just one day task that I showed you in the previous slide. It's a continuous task right till the day. And from day four onwards or on day four, after you have acquired more knowledge then what you need to do, you also need to start practicing and fixing. So don't begin practicing straight away, hundreds of questions, thousands of questions without technique, without English language skills is not going to work for you. Because in the end, this is an English exam. I keep telling you that. You keep forgetting that. This is an English exam. If you perfect your technique, automatically all the questions will become easier for you. So you have to develop some reading habits as well, fast reading skills. So do some reading, okay? I always advocate for sciencedaily.com because this is the favorite website for Pearson to extract the PT question materials. Okay, you will see a lot of scientific articles, a lot of social articles in the PT exam, especially the academic. And these are the places where they get the questions from. And you will see they have written the language in a beautiful manner. A lot of good words are used. Okay, you will start observing the patterns there. How adjectives are coming before the noun, how adverbs are coming close to the verb, subject, verb, object in active voice sentences, object, verb, subject in passive voice sentences. All those things will be visible to you. Keep doing that. And then when you are practicing, you have to find your mistakes. Oh, did I miss to notice that adjective describes the noun? So I should have been looking at the adjectives. So identify your mistakes. That is the main important thing. Once you identify your mistakes, you have to focus. I should not repeat that kind of mistake. So that's why we have a saying, practice makes a man perfect. Of course, women as well. But that's just a saying or a proverb. So continue your practice and from day five onwards, meaningful practice. Okay, what you started on day four, you have to continue more meaningful practice. What is more meaningful practice means? Of course, you need to do reading. Of course, you need to keep improving your vocabulary and doing that will automatically help you to build some collocations as well. Okay, which kind of prepositions goes with which words automatically it will get added to your vocabulary bank and then Meaningful practice means critical thinking. Critical thinking, you wear a critical hat, you don't literally wear it, you just imaginary virtually you wear it, is you understand the text that is given to you. You have to find the hints and the clues that are given to you. Many a times, 
grammatical clues, contextual clues are given in the writing itself. All you need to do is just identify it. When I show you the examples at the end of this video, you will understand what kind of clues I'm talking about. So you have to focus on finding those clues. Okay. It's not that difficult when you start thinking in that manner. You have to think that you are good in English. First of all, build your motivation. Improve your grammar. Improve your vocabulary as well. First thing is grammar. If you improve the grammar, then the clues and the hints will become more apparent to you, more clearly visible to you. And then also apply some understanding of the context. What is this text talking about? Why is this word making more sense than this word? So only context can help you there. So, but always grammar comes first. Collocations, of course, if you already know the collocations, you can solve the questions directly using collocations. But if you don't know, still grammar can help you to pick up the word type. Context will help you. The meaning of the words will help you to identify which shortlisted word out of eight words is going to fit the context very well. Now, what you have done till the 14 days, you have to keep repeating that. Make it perfect. Okay? Don't ignore any of the steps that I showed you earlier. On day 15, when you think, okay, I have done diligent work, hard work, okay, absolutely hard work is needed for the PT exam because many of you are out of touch from English from a long time, maybe because you did not study in the English medium or because of your work culture, okay, the place where you work, the language that you speak in your workplace or on a daily life, all those things dampen your English skills. So it's time to revive that. Okay, whatever you learned in your childhood days, revive yourself. Please make time for yourself. This is the exam that you want to clear, right? So if you are too busy with your family, too busy with your job, then how will you make time for this? Absolutely time is necessary. So on day 15, again, after you have done all the hard work, you do another 15 questions. Okay, an average with an average of four blanks, let's say 15 times four is 60 blanks see how much is your score okay simple maths right 53 out of 60 is 79 plus score 44 out of 60 which means you got 16 incorrect you can still cross 65 for reading fill in the blanks and if you get 34 out of 50 which is almost halfway mark that's what the score also you will get close to 50 plus so you need to improve if you are here you want to get here Maybe if you are here, you want to get here. So only with the meaningful practice and the steps that I showed you, you can definitely improve in those areas. And absolutely, it has worked for many, many people that I have taught. The only thing is time and diligent focus. Practice using the same techniques of the grammar techniques, applying the meaning, critical thinking, all those things. Okay, after initially, it will take a little bit of time for you to think that way. Many students tell me, sir, I know the grammar shortcuts, I know the grammar techniques, but when I see the question, I can't apply them. I'm not able to find it. So break it down to the absolute simplest knowledge, whether it's passive voice. Find the subject, find the verb, find the object. Subjects and objects are always nouns or pronouns. And nouns are described by adjectives. Verbs are described by adverbs. So that is the pattern you will slowly start identifying and slowly it will get faster. Once you get faster, you will be able to get more score and you will be able to solve the questions in a quicker amount of time. That's where you want to be. So these 15 days are very, very important for you to improve and perfect your English language skills, especially for reading fill in the blanks. Now, whatever techniques I showed you and I have been showing you on the YouTube channel still does not change, okay? Reading, for reading, the only trick that you can apply is the grammar tricks. And let's see the questions now. Again, these are picked up from the real exam, maybe from this month or last month, but these are actual exam questions. And once you are accessing the prediction files, you will know that these are the direct questions from the exam. I'm not making up these questions just to give you an easy explanation on the screen. You can verify it. Okay, real exam questions. How do we solve it? Start reading first. For two decades leading up to the millennium, global demand for food dash steadily. Okay, which kind of word is steadily? Of course, look close to the blanks. 
Steadily is a very common pattern for adverbs. Any word ending with ly is adverb. Now adverbs mostly describe the verb, sometimes adjectives as well. So global demand for food, we don't see a verb yet. So we are expecting a verb. What happened? Which verbs? Now find out the verbs from the options. This is a noun. This is a noun. This is an adjective, stronger. Increased is a verb. Decline is a verb. Decline, declined. Increase, increased. Past tense, present tense. That's a verb. So which one will you use? Decline or increased? Now apply the context. Global demand for food dash steadily along with the growth in the world's population. So leading up to global demand for the food dash steadily. Declined steadily, increased steadily. Declined is not an option here, only in the present tense form. So we are talking about something that has happened in the past. Look at the first three words for two decades, last 20 years we are talking about. Has to be a past tense verb. So that's why increased is agreeing with you meaningfully as well as grammatically. Okay, how you, just now you saw how we identified the grammar pattern using the words that are appearing close to the blanks. Okay, so that's the technique you will come to understand, you will come to perfect once you keep following the techniques. Let's look at the next blank. Along with the growth in the world's population, record harvests, dash in income and diversification of diets dash in incomes which kind of word do you think will come here decline in incomes or deteriorations in income improvements in income what kind of thing continue reading if you are not very sure as a result food prices continue to dash through 2000 continue to what continue to decline Continued to deteriorations, improvement, stronger is not making sense at all. So this particular word, if you see, continued to decline. Why? Because the very next sentence, but. So now it will talk about contrasting information. What contrasting? It talks about rising again. So when in contrast you are talking about rise, so in the previous sentence you need to talk about decline. So that's why this was the clue that was given to you, contextual clue. This is the clue I was talking about. Identify the clues and it will work out easily for you. So this becomes your third answer option. Okay. Let's say we are still not able to figure out the second one as in the real exam. Okay. Continue reading. Rising production could not keep pace with the even dash growth in the demand. Now growth is a noun. What describes a noun is an adjective. Okay. Because we are not looking for a verb here. Verb is already describe keep pace so keep is a verb and over here this is a noun we need something to describe this growth stronger growth this is an adjective this is the only adjective here so straight away pick it up now, fourth answer you found now you can go back to the second option and not this one this one so now we have only two left deteriorations in income is making sense or improvements in income they are the same word types this is perfectly an example of how you need to understand the context and apply the meaning. Deterioration, are we talking about deterioration or improvements? Read it again and understand. Along with the growth in the world's population, record harvests, diversification of diets. So all these are indicating that we have been flourishing. We are doing good. So that all gives you a hint that this will be improvements, not deteriorations. Okay, if people's earning power decreases, like deteriorations in income, then they won't be able to spend much, right? Make sense? So that's why you apply all the common sense, whatever you have got according to the text that is given, and you will be able to find the best word. That's how you solve it in the exam as well. Second question, similar technique. Daily, a multivitamin and mineral tablet may slow the dash cognitive decline that happens naturally as we get older the what now you have to know meaning words okay not every question not every blank can be solved just using grammar okay so over here you have to apply the meaning it's talking about a slow decline a slow decline you see the words here these are giving you the hint a slow decline which of the words do you think 
agrees or is equal to slow decline. Gradual. Gradual is the word. So you need to know the meaning of the words as well. Okay. Gradual cognitive decline. That's the word. The next one, the benefits of taking multivitamin pills have been dash. Have been. So which kind of word comes here? Now you need to know the grammar shortcuts. After have been, after verb, either verb ing will come or verb 3 will come. So we don't see any verb ing in the option. So only verb 3 will come, which is past participle. Okay. So debated is there, appeared is there, recommended is there. What will you choose? Benefits of taking vitamin pills have been dash among doctors. Among doctors, not by doctors. Recommended needs a by preposition. Recommended by someone. I am recommending you. So that means recommended by Anurag. So in this case, it has among. So recommended won't be there. Debated or appeared. Appeared among doctors. Have been appeared among doctors. Not making sense. Debated among doctors is the making perfect sense. Why? Because they are talking about it. They are discussing about it. And that's why it becomes the best meaningful word here. Okay. Grammar helped you in step one. Meaning helped you in step two. They were once widely dashed as an insurance policy for people with poor diets. Now, I told you that recommended needs a buy or recommended as can also come. Why? Because if I am recommending something, I am recommending it as something. Okay. So, they were once widely dashed as an insurance policy. So, I will recommend you something as an insurance for you in the exam or as a backup for you in the exam. So, I am recommending grammar as a backup plan for you in the exam. So, if you perfect the grammar, you can perfect the reading fill in the blanks questions. So, in this case, recommended is making sense. Widely recommended as an insurance policy for people with poor diets based on studies that found those who take them dash to have better health. Dash to. Now, this is purely collocation. Okay. Take them is in present tense. Okay. Who take them. So, that's why another present tense, which is close to it, will be applied here. So, recommended was your third answer and tend to have better health becomes your fourth answer. Now, you see, applying the grammar techniques, applying the meaning can help you solve the questions perfectly and that's how you should be doing in the exam as well. Now, it's just a time to start implementing the 15-day plan with you and speak to me or comment to me while you are preparing or even after 15 days. How did it work out for you? Are you feeling more confident? Have you got that skills now? Have you got that confidence, motivation in yourself so that you can get more marks in the exam? Absolutely, it will start working. Trust me. Great job. Just follow the steps and the techniques religiously and 100% your scores will start improving. That's a guarantee. If you're also struggling in the reading and writing fill in the blanks questions, then this video is a must watch for you. 10 secret tips of reading and writing fill in the blanks, a very important topic. Hit subscribe and keep watching EduTrainX and I will soon be back with another informative video on PT topic. See you soon.